In this video, we're going to extend what we did in the previous video, and we're going to add the ability for users to delete transactions from the page and from the database. So we're going to implement that deletion, and we're also going to add an HX confirm attribute, and that's going to prevent the user from mistakenly deleting a transaction by providing a confirmation message for them when they click the icon. We're also going to write some tests for the functionality of deleting a transaction, just to make sure that it's working as expected. So let's get started. So in the last video, what we did was we added a couple of icons to the row that displays the transactions, one for editing an existing transaction, and we have another icon here for deleting a transaction. And these were grabbed from the Hero Icons website, and there's a link to that in the description. Now the edit transaction page is now working. It has a form that allows the user to update an existing transaction. But at the moment, we don't have any functionality on the other icon. In this video, we're gonna add the functionality to allow users to remove a transaction from the database. So let's start by going to VS Code and we're going to go to the urls.py file. Now we created this URL here for updating a transaction in the previous video. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna copy that to the line below and I'm gonna change the path to slash delete and we're gonna change the view function here to delete underscore transaction. And then finally, we can change the name of the URL to delete transaction as well. Now, like the update transaction endpoint, it's important here to add the primary key to the URL and that's so that the back end the Django view knows which transaction to actually remove from the database. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write this view function called delete transaction. So let's go over to views.py and I'm going to go to the bottom here and we're going to add the name of this function in delete transaction and that's going to be quite similar in some ways to the update transaction. So I'm going to copy the first two lines of code. So let's grab the parameters to the view as well as the first line of code. I'm going to paste these in here. As with all views in Django, it takes the request and it's also going to take the primary key that's being passed through from the URL. And what we're doing here is we're looking up a transaction using the get object or 404 function and we're making sure that we're looking up by primary key, but also by user. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna look at the primary key in the URL, for example, 10, and it's gonna get the transaction that has that primary key of 10, but we only want to perform the deletion if the user that's actually requesting this is the user who owns the transaction. So that's the purpose of the second look up here. Now we also want to decorate this with the login required decorator, only an authenticated user should be able to call this URL using HTMX. And what we're also going to do here is we're only going to allow a delete HTTP request to be sent to this URL. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to the top and we're going to bring another import in from Django and that's from the django.views.decorators.http module. And it's a function called require HTTP methods. We can use that in our view function here. So underneath login required, we're gonna decorate the function with a second decorator. And the method that we're gonna require is a delete request. So we pass that in here and that's a list containing a single element. You can require multiple of these if your view can take multiple different methods. In our case, it's only a delete request we want to allow for this given URL. Now, after we fetch the transaction, I'm just gonna write the logic here because it's pretty simple, to be honest. We're gonna call transaction.delete. So when we fetch the transaction with the given lookup parameters here, when we get that back, we can just call the delete function and that's going to remove it from the database. And then I'm gonna set up a context variable here, a context dictionary, and that's gonna have a message that we're gonna pass back here. And that's because we're going to use similar functionality as we had for the update and add transactions. So when we updated one, we had a message of transaction was updated successfully. Let's go back to the bottom here. We're gonna add a message for when we remove a transaction. And actually what I'm gonna do here is use an F string in Python. And we're gonna give it the message transaction of the given amount on the given date was deleted successfully. And we need to render that transaction success template when this action is completed. So I'm gonna copy this statement here and let's go to the bottom and return that. Now we've called this transaction success, but we're now kind of using this in different ways. So even when we delete a transaction, we're gonna return that. And that's because that contains a general outline, a general page for performing these actions. Now we could rename this template if we want to, I'm just gonna keep it the same just for simplicity. Now, once we've defined this view function, what we can do is we can go back to the template containing the table. And that was in a template called transaction 
container.html. So let's go over to that. And we're gonna to go to the table here where we're rendering these out. So let me scroll down here. And it was in here that we had the SVG elements that were rendering. So the top one that's surrounded with an anchor tag, that one was for updating a transaction. We now want to surround the other SVG and that's this one here with the cross for deleting a transaction. We need to surround that with another anchor tag that uses HTMX in order to send that request to the backend. So let's do that now. We create an anchor tag. And because we are restricting this to delete requests, we're going to use the hx-delete attribute. And we pass a URL into this that we're going to send the request to. And I'm going to go to urls.py and the name of this was delete-transaction. So let's copy the name of that. And we're going to paste that into the URL template tag. And again, just like the update transaction URL, this takes a primary key for the transaction that we want to delete. So we can pass that in like this. And I'm gonna add a couple of extra parameters here. HX push URL, let's set that to true. And actually I'm gonna copy all of these from the previous anchor tag. The same target is gonna be used. And we also want cursor pointer so that the user knows that it's a clickable link. Let's paste these in here and we can surround the SVG with that anchor tag. So let's now test this out. If we go back to our application and refresh the page, I'm going to try and delete the top transaction that has an amount of 555. And you can see that we get back this message here. The transaction has been deleted successfully. When we go back to the page, you can see that that has actually been removed. I think there's a second one with the same amount here. Let's also remove that and you can see that that has now been removed from the table and therefore it's now been removed from the database on the back end. So this works, but what happens if a user accidentally clicks this button and deletes a transaction by mistake? We want to prevent this and we can do that using another HTMX attribute. So I'm going to open the HTMX documentation for this attribute. It's called hx-confirm and this allows you to confirm an action before you issue the request. So that's useful in cases where the action is destructive and you want to make sure that the user really wants to do it. And that's exactly what we want to do here because we don't want the user to accidentally remove transactions from their table. All we need to pass to HX confirm is a string that will pop up on the page. So let's do that now and go back to our anchor tag for deleting a transaction. We're gonna add HX confirm and we can set that to some text. Are you sure you want to delete this transaction? We can then save this page and go back to the transaction list page and refresh. This time when we click the delete button, you can see the confirmation message. And this action is only gonna be performed if we click OK. If we click cancel, we're just taken back to the page and that transaction with 111 is going to be still there if we refresh the page. It's not going to be removed. Whereas if we click OK, you can see we get back the partial that tells us that this transaction has been deleted and that is no longer there when we go back to the page. So all of these update transaction and delete transaction endpoints, they're all working with HTMX and they're all wired up as if this was a single page application. And I think it looks quite smooth when we can do this and we can also add transactions and update and filter transactions all using HTMX and without a page reload. What we want to do now just to finish the video is add a test for the delete functionality. So this is gonna be a short test function in PyTest. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the application and we're gonna to go to the testviews.py file and I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom of this. Now, in order to delete a transaction from the database, we're going to need to actually tell PyTest that the function that we're gonna create is able to access the database. And we use this mark from PyTest Django in order to do that. So let's create a function here that's gonna be called test delete transaction request. We're gonna pass the user fixture into that. And if you want to know more about that, see the previous videos we did on these topics. We're also going to pass the transaction dictionary parameters and also the client from PyTest Django that allows us to send requests to our application. Now this fixture here, transaction dictionary parameters, if we go to conftest.py and we look at that one, what this does is it creates a transaction in the database that's tied to the user and it returns some data for us in the form of a dictionary. The important part of this is that we have a transaction in the database and therefore that's gonna be available in this test function. So what we're gonna to do to start with is call client.force underscore login, and we pass the user to that. And that means that the user is gonna be authenticated and it's gonna be able to send these requests. And remember the delete transaction view requires this authentication. So we need to log the user in in the test function. Once we've done that, we can create an assertion here that the user has a single transaction in the database. So we check that the count is equal to one. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to send the delete request. So I'm going to add a comment here, send delete request. And we're going to use the Django client here and we're going to call the delete method. That's going to send an HTTP delete request. And we need to send that to a URL. So we're going to call the reverse function and we're going to pass the delete dash transaction URL into this. So that's going to call that function and we need to pass the primary key of the transaction that we want to delete. We do that using the quargs keyword argument and we set that to transaction.primarykey. So transaction.primarykey, we actually need to get the transaction from the database. We're going to do that above here by calling transaction.objects.first. That's going to return that single transaction that's in the database and we can then attach the primary key as a parameter for this URL. Now after we call the delete method, it's going to send a request to this particular URL and that's going to forward it on to the delete transaction view and that's going to then fetch that transaction and call delete. So it should therefore remove that from the database. So what we want to test in this test function is that we no longer have a transaction in the database. Before we called client.delete, we had a single transaction. We're checking that that's equal to one. What I'm going to do is copy this line of code and just below client.delete, we're now going to check that calling this statement here will return zero. So there should no longer be any transactions in the database that are tied to this user. So that's the check that we're going to implement here. Once we've written that code, we can go to the terminal. I'm going to stop the server and we can run the pytest command. And we're going to see that that returns successfully. We have 12 tests passing here. And that means that the expected functionality of delete transaction is working as expected. We have a transaction. That transaction is tied to this user. And when we call the client.delete method and pass the primary key for that transaction in the URL, after we call that, we should have the transaction being deleted from the back end. And this final assertion is testing for that. We are checking that the count is therefore equal to zero. And you can see that that is passing. So the functionality is working as expected. So that's all for this video. In this video, we've added some functionality for deleting a transaction from the user's table. And we've seen how we can add a confirmation in HTMX. And we do that by adding an HX confirm attribute. And that helps prevent the user from making mistakes when they perform potentially destructive actions, such as deleting something from the database. So if we click cancel here, the transaction will not be deleted. On the other hand, if we click OK, we are going to delete that transaction and that's going to be removed from the table. It's going to be removed from the database and therefore we have this functionality working as expected. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you've not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel would be greatly appreciated. And if you're able to contribute to that coffee goal, we have a link in the description that would be really appreciated as well. And we can hopefully release this Django REST framework course on YouTube. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.